Our movie starts with a doctor named Malik. Listening to recordings of his patient, the criminal Malcolm, reciting a poem about his childhood and his mother, whom he resented for things like leaving him locked in a hotel room while she was busy. When Malik asks Malcolm about his crimes, Malcolm's response are irrational. We notice that Malcolm has been sentenced to death for killing six people. However, when his defense finds his journals, they demand a retrial before the execution. Malcolm is transported from prison. To the trial location. Later on, we shift to a motel on a rainy night where we first see Larry, the motel employee, wasting some time. Suddenly, he is approached by a man carrying his bleeding wife, clearing that he and his wife were involved in a car accident. We get a flashback event when a girl called Paris was trying to reach her lighter from her bag in the back seat convertible car. Once she opened the bag, some of her clothes got stuck in the air due to the high speed, including a sharp pair. Of heels. We understand that it was all because of those heels the family's car got a flat tire. As the husband fixes the tire, his wife stands by him. Another car, driven by someone called Eden, accidentally hit the wife in front of her husband and son. Eden, who drives a cab, was only trying to reach a backup battery for Carolyn, the woman he drove, from the passenger seat. She tries to prevent him from descending from the car, but he doesn't listen to her. He steps out to assist the injured woman. Woman and seeks to take her to the nearest place to get help to call for help as they don't have a phone with them. At this time, we see Paris, who lost her shoes a while ago, facing troubles going through the floods. So she drives her car backwards and hits a network tower, causing a career signal disconnection. When the family of the woman who got hit by Eden arrive at the hotel, they couldn't call an ambulance due to the network issues. So Eden threw Carolyn out of the car so he could take off trying to get help for the family. During this time, Paris's car breaks down and she meets Ed on the road, asking him to give her a ride to the nearest spot so she can get help. On the way, Paris realizes that the road he's heading towards is blocked by water because she just came from there. However, he decides to go anyway, and indeed, he was stuck by the water. They ask for help from the first car they saw on the way to take them back to the motel, and when Ginny and her boyfriend Lou agree to take them, Ed got back to his car to pick up his things, including his gun, and they all all rode together to the motel. When Larry, the motel guy, sees Paris, he gives her some attitude and refuses to rent her a room because he thinks she's a prostitute. At this time, Ed goes to room 4 to check on the wife's condition and Paris takes room 7 while Ginny and Lau take room 6. At this point, George, the husband, realizes they'll be spending the night at the hotel due to the weather. At the time, Officer Rhodes, who was responsible for transporting the prisoner with him, had to stop by the motel due to the bad weather. He asked Larry for a room for the night. Ed asks for a needle and thread and starts stitching up the wife's wounds. When Ed asks George, the husband, about the young boy, George informs him that he is his stepson and that his father left them two years ago and since then he has been quiet. Later, the officer and the criminal took room 10. After that, the officer checked on the wife at night and Carolyn leaves her room number 9 to try to catch a signal. But suddenly, she's attacked. Ed senses something is wrong and quickly leaves his room to see what's happening. He goes to the laundry room and when he opens the washing machine, he finds Carolyn's head inside. At this time, Rhodes and Larry enter the laundry room, shocked by the sight. Next to the head, they find the key to room 10, which is Rhodes' room. Then Ed asks Rhodes about the prisoner. When they go to check on him, they find that he broke the pipe he was cuffed to and escaped through the window. They gather everyone in the hotel to inform them about Carolyn's death and the prisoner's escape. Ed asks them all to stay in their rooms until they figure things out and Rhodes and Aiden move to search for the prisoner. At this point, Ginny becomes very tense and insists she needs to leave the place. She goes to her room to gather her clothes but her husband tries to calm her down and prevents her from collecting her things. This is when she tells him that she knows about his cheating on her. She enters the bathroom, locks herself in and Lau keeps knocking on the door asking her to get out to talk but suddenly the knocking on the door stops. When Ginny opens the door, she sees a shadow of someone holding a knife approaching her. 
She tries to lock the door before he opens it and she manages to do so before escaping through the window. She runs into Detective Rhodes outside followed by everyone. When they enter the room, they find Lau dead. Meanwhile, the criminal tries to escape and hides in the storage room. But Rhodes and Ed catch him and hold him in the storage room. They ask Larry to guard the criminal while Paris takes care of Ginny until they try the radio again. Paris goes to gather her things from her room, and Ed follows her, revealing that he used to be a cop, but he quit because he was tired of it. He takes a camera and goes to film Lau, finding a key with the number 9 on it right next to him, realizing the criminal is on a countdown. Then, they see Larry leaving the storage room, saying he went to get something. When Rhodes enters to check on the criminal, he discovers him beaten with a baseball bat that Larry had, and next to him is a key to room 8. They also find Carolyn's purse with Larry, but he denies killing anyone and threatens to kill Paris. However, Paris fights back, causing Larry to stumble and fall into the fridge, where he finds a frozen body. Then, Larry takes his car and speeds off with the child standing in front of it. George rushes to save the child, but he ends up dying. In the present time, the judge was listening to Malcolm's defense. Malik was in the session. They present evidence of Malcolm's schizophrenia, citing his varied writing styles in his journals. Dr. Malcolm explains that there is no cure for his condition and that the patient may not even be aware of committing crimes. Then Malcolm enters the trial. We go back to the flashback after they caught Larry. He tells them he didn't kill anyone and that the body in the fridge belongs to the hotel manager, whom he found dead and decided to hide and not report to avoid getting blamed. And he took over his position. Ed and Paris believe him. Then, Ginny suggests that they might have something in common. At night, Rhodes hears a noise from the mother's room. When he enters, he notices she's dead with a key to room 6 next to her bed. They're surprised because she died from her injuries from the car crash. Not because of the criminal, and they're even more surprised when they can't find the key to room 7, but they find it in George's pocket. Since they witness the events getting weirder and more insane, they suspect it's all happening because of ghosts. Ed asks Ginny and Paris to take the child and escape. Ginny and the child head to their car, but suddenly it explodes. When Rhodes puts out the fire, he doesn't find anyone in the car and accuses Ed is behind all this. At that moment, they discover that all the bodies of the dead have disappeared from the place. Paris then surrenders, collapses, and says she wants to live, mentioning she's turning 30 the following week. They all realize that their birthdays fall on the same day, even those who died. It doesn't make sense to be all trapped at the same time, facing death while they don't know each other and then find out that they were all born on the same day and that their birthday is next week. Suddenly, lightning strikes, cutting off the power in the motel. Ed hears Dr. Malik's voice asking who he's talking to now, referring to Malcolm's personalities. Malik then realizes he's talking to Ed and we then understand that everything happening is just in Ed's mind, nothing more. Malik asks Malcolm about the last place he remembers being at. Ed recalls driving Carolyn but suddenly the weather turned bad and they went to a hotel where people were dying and the bodies disappeared. Malik then shows Ed a picture of Malcolm, which is a picture of himself. Ed says that he knows this man for killing the six people back in the motel. Shocking Ed when he realizes Malcolm is in front of him. Malcolm starts getting agitated, thinking they changed his face. Malik explains to Ed that a kid's mind splits into different personalities to escape reality when the child is subjected to trauma. This happened to Malcolm with one of the remaining personalities being Ed. Ed thinks Malik was joking with him. Then Malcolm hands him a mirror and Ed is shocked to see Malcolm in front of him. Malcolm starts to get tense and agitated, thinking they changed his face. Malcolm tells Ed that these personalities exist only in his mind and the proof is that they were all born on the same day. He also explains that due to the treatment he's undergoing, he's forced to confront all his personalities at once and those who died in his mind won't reappear. With only one personality left of them and it's the one who committed those crimes, they need to figure out which one it was to get him off the electric chair, the death sentence. Malcolm then returns to Ed's personality in the hotel and Paris goes to Rhodes' car to look for a flashlight. There she notices that the radio wires were cut and finds a note indicating that Rhodes is a criminal. They find out 
He killed a real cop and put him in the car trunk. Then Paris runs to inform Ed, but she is shocked by Rhodes coming towards her. Just before he kills her, Larry appears from behind and hits Rhodes with a fire extinguisher, knocking him out. When Larry tries to take Rhodes' gun, Rhodes waits up and shoots him with it. Then he chases Paris to get the keys to his car. However, she hides from him until she meets Ed, who gives her a gun. She then goes to Rhodes and kills him. But Ed gets injured and dies in Paris's arms. At that moment, the defense argues that Rhodes is the reason for the six crimes, meaning Malcolm can't be executed because of crimes committed by a personality in his mind against his will. The judge rules that Malcolm be transferred to a mental institution to continue his treatment. Paris remains the only one in Malcolm's mind. She buys a house and land as she wishes and suddenly finds a key behind her. Behind her, she finds a child who disappeared from the motel. It turns out he was the one behind all the crimes that happened. He was the first personality in Malcolm's mind since childhood. That child personality takes over Malcolm's consciousness, making him attack Malik and kill him. And then he escapes. And that's it. If you like this recap, hit like, share, and subscribe to our channel to keep seeing content like this one. If you have any requests or thoughts, drop them below in the comment section, and we will see you at the next one. Peace out.